Hello everyone, and welcome back to War Game Red Dragon. We have a treat of a game for you guys today. We are on Nuclear Winter is Coming, and I'm playing as a South Korean national deck that is also restricted to 85 or prior. So this means a lot of cheap stuff. It means I don't have some of the heavier tanks and better equipment that uh, you usually would see out of South Korea or, say, a Blue Dragon stack. While my ally is playing, I believe um, it's an 85 USA deck. I'm, don't quote me on that, though. I know it was USA, but... Don't know if he went as restricted as I did, and we're splitting up the map into two pieces. He's rushing Delta, Charlie, and I'm going to be trying to push through India and into Fox. So right off the bat, we have OH6s. I don't have access to ninjas. Um, oh, well, no, I wouldn't anyway, I guess. Ah, my bad. But uh, we see we see an MI24K, and this guy... I don't know how I feel about this guy. It's 110 points for a recon plane. But it is exceptional optics, 10 strength, it can fight, that's for sure. Just not against, say, AA or AA helos, which I think is a bit of a weakness for that sort of expensive piece. But uh, for my own air defenses, I do just have K263, so 40 points. They're about like a pivance, and that is something that is at least reasonably effective. And you can see, I'm getting a lot of infantry over to the woods on the right. I was expecting a fight there, and I was also trying a bit of a, bit of a staging ground in, these, in this forest. But this really kind of had me worried because, yep, it was spotted, and here comes the bomber, so we'll have to see. I'm hoping he'll overestimate my progress, and it looks like the bombs are a little bit forward, a little bit on the left-hand side there as well, and there's a reason that I went for the right-hand side in the lower part of the forest for my deployment was to dodge expected bombing runs in that area. Second one coming in, and all it does is stun a cheap tank. So this guy's only 20 points. And he didn't even take a lot of damage. Peace Pheasant 1, meanwhile, for me coming in, and a bit of a overzealous bombing run in the woods there, but, uh, well, the helicopter was giving me trouble, I figured there was probably infantry there as well, and now you can see my own stuff is unloaded, KFE 25 is leading the way, So Chung Su behind them, and Gong Byung trying to protect against other infantry, and now that Hugh Sam Stinger should be doing some good work, but <laughs> two shots, this killed me at the time, 50% accuracy, two shots, you expect one hit, and I got nothing, and he got out of range, so of course he will be staying alive and staying in the fight. But uh, now there is a bit of an approach here, so T-72B1s from I Hate Helos leading the way, but that's going to run into a bunch of Jigsaw which I like these guys a lot, the recoilless rifles are pretty great, but also Peace Pheasant 2 is trying to take him out, and we do. 85 point kill off a 90 point plane, so if he can get out, that's nice. If he can't, it's only a 5 point loss, but it does look like that's going to be evac successfully. And over on the other side, it was a little bit interesting, there wasn't all that much going on quite yet. So if you take a look at neutral, it looks like Vimes was a little bit slow moving up compared to Core, so Core is already well entrenched in Delta, and it looks like uh, Vimes is... Infantry are just now getting through the woods, of course standard mode Strelchi won't be able to do all that much against all of this armor, uh, so that is going to be a problem for the Red 4 team as the game progresses, but over on this side we are trying to get rid of the Spetsnaz crew here, KFE-25s will outduel Skrushits, but BDV are certainly going to turn that around, so uh, K200s, and I actually had a Zippo here, so KM-132, and this was brutal, I mean, let's take a look at what that did, so only 4 kills, but this entire zone they can't walk through, and that actually manages to protect my vehicles quite well. So I was really happy with that, and I knew that, yeah, this was going to be bad, but the Jigsaw Bond were trying to get a couple cheeky shots here, and maybe even take out that Conquerors team that's trying to slide forward. In terms of map control, we have India, we have Gulf, and it looks like uh, the Red 4 team was a little bit slow capping Foxtrot as well, so there's going to be a ticking plus two. But uh, that is not exactly a deciding factor this early. Another big bombing run coming in, and this time targeted where I was, and uh, another swing and a miss. So I was doing my best to dodge bombing runs here, and it looked like it was actually kind of successful. So, I mean, I've, I've bombed stuff in this forest before. I've sent artillery there to hell and back, like on the Polish artillery uh, game a couple weeks ago. But I really just didn't want to get punished that hard, and I was really, really trying to make an effort there. So... Now, seeing that my ally has encountered Vimes over on this side, um, I was using some spare points to cap Charlie. I mean, I don't know, I, I was just holding here. I didn't really have a lot of confidence in the ability of South Korea 85 to push against all these heavy tanks, so, you know, T-64As aren't huge, but they do outweigh my <laughs> little M84A3Ks. These guys, I mean, they're barely even a tank. They're really just a fire support vehicle, uh, so I had no intention of pushing up that far unless my opponent made a mistake, and I figured if I could help lock down the other side of the field, we could really put some pressure on. But Sochun Su, 85, are doing really well. 
course, just cheap MTLBVs here, but that did also tell me there's probably some infantry back there. My Gongbyeong are moving back so that they don't engage with armor, and the T-64As are trying to go into some woods that they think might be cleared after those bombing runs. So let's see what happens to them, as the 20-pointers are actually lined up for a decent angle here, and first shot, 7 points of damage. Immediately M84A dies, but we get one of the T-64s off a 20-pointer. And let's see, 5 strength left on that one, Jigsaswagibon opening up from inside the forest into the frontal armor, it's so not a lot of damage there, but we do get the kill, and that was actually pretty nice, I was pretty happy with that, but a Thermo Mig coming in from Vimes, and let's see where those land, ooh, that's gonna be brutal, right on top of Core's supposed advance here, <laughs> oof, yeah, yeah, okay, so everything they're retreating, Specialny, Yednotsky, and Modestrelchi trying to hold that side, backed up by an M84N, which is pretty nice control over this side, but really nothing left there that we can see, to fight in the woods, and this is a hold course done against me, it's absolutely brutal, and I hated it, <laughs> but, um, well, we'll see that one up, uh, not too much longer, uh, I mean, he just, he pushed me out of that side, and it was just, it was kind of impressive, honestly, um, but now we do have reinforcements coming out from the MTLBVs, and just, I think, probably VDV from Hilo, is not able to quite see it yet, nope, just Motostrelki, and this is going to be interesting. So Gangbyeong are moving up, KM-132 is moving up, So Chung su trying to deny the MTLBVs leading the way, and K-200s turning on both of their guns, the, the M2 Browning and the M60. Not going to be a lot of damage against armor there, but it's enough to stun, and the So Chung su are going to be denying. BMPT support is nice. It's unfortunate that guy was detracked. Probably was supposed to help with, uh, with that push, and would have been quite devastating. But now the KM-132 is able to shoot, and watch these Motostrelki, man. 16, 14, 11... I mean, just brutal, and they're stunned, they can't really get out of the way, 8, 7, and that whole uh, advance was a little bit delayed. But another bombing run coming in, and this is something I really didn't have the tools to deal with all that well. Uh, as you can see, I'm not doing my usual fighter screening, even if it is only somewhat effective. But, so, ooh, A10 Thunderbolt coming in, one shot, two shot off the V-Hor, three and four, swing and a miss. The V-Hor did escape uh, just barely off that A10, and you hate to see it, well, unless you're on the other team anyway. But uh, now I am bringing in some better infantry, so UDT seals, these guys are 30 points. The M60 shorty isn't the best, but the carbine is pretty nice, and elite training was what I thought I needed here as the backbone to maybe lead the way into this town, if I could get some smoke across this distance, if I could uh, keep it up with a couple bombing runs. Peace Pheasant ones, of course, are not the best bombers for town clearing, but they are very good nonetheless. But another bomber coming in, and it was, it was relentless, man, I swear. Also a seed plane, that's gonna take out the, ooh, no. Shot at the K263, a uh, little bit of return fire, then that gun turned off, and let's see, two K200s lost off the bombing run, so again, just not a lot of damage being done by that repeated pressure. Um, basically saved this position, because if this stuff had been wiped out, and I was trying to reinforce into the farther back forest and the, and the town here, that would have been a, a difficult position to hold as the game progressed, but I uh, still have those helicopters moving up. The recon helo that I haven't been able to deal with is taken out in one nice shot by, uh, shot by the M727 IHawk. Beautiful, beautiful shot there. Nine damage. Must have been a crit, or he was damaged earlier because that helicopter is 10 strength. But beautiful, beautiful shot. And the uh, Mi8 MTV is just he's just keeping on going. So um, it just so happened at the time I was bringing in K200 with stingers. And I was almost, I think I was going to unload them, but the K263 with that radar gun, that Vulcan, is able to stun and take that guy out. So, very nice. We do now have infantry fighting in the woods up here, and the Gyeongbyeong are not going to be up to taking on some BTR-70s, so I should have retreated them here, should have let the Socheng Su do their work, but I was kind of hoping they'd distract a little bit, because I wasn't confident that one unit of Socheng Su would be able to take out both of those BTRs, and the Napalm rockets can, of course, get a nice stun. So... We do also have another GB shot moving up while Core is holding in Delta, and I'm just trying to secure that. We are taking out a plus two as Charlie's capped, but so is Foxtrot, so the plus four from a little bit ago is gone now. And yeah, you can see the Sochang Su really not that effective at clearing these BTR 70s. Um, I mean, their AT weapon is 20 rounds a minute, but only 16 AP. And they were damaged, they were shaken, it's going to drop the accuracy a little bit. Actually used all their ammunition too, so not exactly ideal. And now we have artillery support coming in from an MTLB Podnos off the Red 4 player, and I'm reinforcing up the top with some UDT seal that I was hoping would be a bit of a nasty surprise for whatever came next. So, looking back over the field, there's more bombing runs coming in, absolutely brutal here, trying to hammer in, and let's see where those land. 
Looks like it's the last known position of the Socheng Su and the Gong Biong. A little bit of nice damage there. Um, not enough to get the kill, but I mean, those Socheng Su with one man left, they're not exactly an effective team. So, I mean, it works, and one of the units of Gong Biong was killed. So, my Stingers are getting up here. I'm trying to deny forward helos and also just. In <clears throat> manpad teams can get kills on planes and jets if you are uh, careful and or lucky with them. So A10 Thunderbolt circling ahead, I'm not sure about that because unless you have a direct target I tend not to call in ATGM planes, but it seemed to be working at the time and now the Morskaya Pechota stunned, moving back. It looks like I'm trying to get the KM-132 up here and this was going to be a fire at position. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, we lost sight of them so I'm thinking... It was either now or a little bit later, I was trying to do a just screening action, getting some napalm going in front of those woods. Uh, Super Gallop coming in from the Red 4 team, let's see what he can spot, if anything, and it looks like he's just circling as well. So a little bit interesting there. L19 does take out my bomber, but the bomber was, uh, well, let's see. Does that have any good effects? Um, yeah, it looks like we did take out some of the special forces there. Spetsnaz screw is still alive, but the, uh, I don't know, it, it was not worth it. Um, but it was not the worst I've ever lost a bomber on, so that's alright with me. UDT Seal, of course, will take out Afghanzis very easily. And while I do lose my Bell 205, it's really not the worst deal. Uh, Panzer Igla is going to be taking some Napalm to the face, and... Oh, maybe? They might be able to get back. Uh, I don't know. Did they? Yeah, actually, they got back out of it. Huh. Good for them. Spetsnaz Gru, meanwhile, running into Gong Byung, who are going to punch above their weight class here until they are taken out. But look at that, down to three, stunned, still moving, even though they're stunned, which is a little weird. But I think that's the auto move out of uh, Napalm. And I do finally lose the KM-132, effectively a Zippo, to another helicopter. So this is why one of the Stinger teams over here just not quite able to get it done. And I'm retreating, not expecting to take out the Spetsnaz, as Mortar Fire from that Podnos does come into support, and the MI-8 MTV is also trying to support there. So, uh... Yeah, kind of some brutal work, but I mean, UDT SEALs will be able to take out that sort of helicopter at close range if they can get the shot on, and uh, a little bit unclear there if they did or didn't, unfortunately. So, uh, in the meantime, this forward hold by Core is just still working wonders. It's getting us the center of the map, and it's providing enough pressure. It seems like Vimes didn't have the points available to cap Alpha, so uh, a little bit unfortunate for the Red 4 player there, but I don't know. I mean. We were holding. I was happy with this hold uh, for long enough. I now have an IHawk in trying to screen out some more of those bombing runs to just gotten too many of them too quickly. Um, and also bringing more infantry in here. So K200s bringing uh, probably Jixaswagi Bun and more UDT seals in the bells. But bombers coming in, looks like both positions and no release there. So probably a bit of a misclick on Hilo's behalf. Probably looking for uh, probably looking for a bombing run into the woods. And the seed plane also does come in and take out my nice IHawk, so a uh, bit of a mismicro there. I turned him off, and then I turned him back on, seeing the bomber and not seeing the seed plane. So a very wonderful play off of uh, the Red 4 team in that regard. L19 being chased by a couple of American fighters and actually is taken down, so the F-15A Eagles do get their mark. 130 point planes, of course, very effective at what they do, uh, particularly for the cost. So. UDT seals moving up now, and we are still denying. I mean, I've been pushed this far back, right? So we had the forward hold in the woods. That's being pushed all the way back to a rear hold in the woods, and more artillery coming in. My Jixus Swaggy Bond, my U new UDT seals, actually one of them taken out by a plane, I think, um, before I was able to send them down. So only one unit there. Bringing in another two, and that T64A in the woods is gonna have. A rough day as Jixus Swaggybun do move forward, and those recoilless rifles are just, well, when they hit anyway, just brutal. So, eh, I don't know actually. Better frontal armor on that than I thought for 50 points. 11 frontal armor? Yeah. I would have thought that would be 2 damage off of the, each shot. Yeah, okay. So that's not bad damage. We're just not getting the uh, accuracy I'd like. And seeing the BMPTs in the woods here, I was really kind of panicked. MI24K also moving up, getting wonderful, wonderful intelligence on everything. Uh, here, but again, a little bit too far forward, probably, this is Stingers, I mean, these guys have missed more shots than they've hit, look at that, one, two hit, uh, misses, three misses, let's see if we can get the fourth one, fourth shot is away, and that is a hit, and we do take down that really expensive helicopter, and in the meantime, now there is finally a well-coordinated push from Vimes, so you can see Core taken out a little bit by bombing runs, we didn't quite see, but those tanks are dead, and the Speciality Yednoski and Modestrelci wave from Vimes is just absolutely terrifyingly brutal here, so we're gonna have to see how 
core manages to hold if he does at all. And I was distracted over here at this point as well. So BMPTs chewing through my UDT seals is not going to be a fun thing. I was bringing up an AH-1S way too close to try and get those uh, tow missiles online just point blank range. And we do get one of them for that, and that was pretty nice. But look at this, Speciality Yednoski, Motostrelchi, more Motostrelchi, OAT-64Cs backing it up. A um, little bit of an on position for uh, vehicles that probably like to be more in the hedge burrows and open uh, fields with those Mount Lucas. But, I mean, KVPTs are good weapons, and they're getting online very effectively. UD, uh, UDT Seals sparring with Morskaya Pachota, and this was a fight I thought they could win relatively handily, but I was worried just because my own infantry had some morale effects, and we are going to be pulling them back, trying to resupply at that K511 cargo. Uh, in the meantime, we can see... I mean, all of the BMPTs were killed, my UDT SEALs did their job, uh, the helicopter also did some good work, although he did get taken out, and then we have an A-10 Thunderbolt from uh, Core trying to go in after something, but I don't really see the target, so a couple of Vidras, but uh, really it's just some vehicles there, for the most part, and yeah, okay, not bad, but I don't know about that. Uh, call in terms of slowing down the infantry push here. M1 Abrams moving up into the woods. 65 points, 15 frontal armor is very nice, but Speciality Yednoski have the AP to chew through that eventually uh, if the Abrams are not supported. And I guess repeated pressure from the Thunderbolts is just dismantling their fire support, which is pretty nice. Speciality Yednoski retreating toward the town and Mechanizovna and Modestrelchi outdueling Rangers and Riflemen. So this does look like it's going to be a red fort hold in the town at the moment, unless the M1 Abrams and maybe some supporting infantry can get some good work done there. But uh, 17, 15, I guess the triple tank in the woods is proving to be a bit more effective than I thought it would be. And now we have a bombing run coming in. Uh, my own Peace Pheasant 1 is trying to get a little bit of support here. So we can see I've pinged for uh, for core so he doesn't move up and into it. And let's see, one unit of Mostrelki in the woods, one unit in the town, 15 strength, 17 strength. Nice defensive action by Core there, and bombs coming in for my hate helos as well. We're able to take out one of those double squads entirely, take the other one down to five men left, and the bombing run from Red 4 also did score a hit, so some brutal combat here. But uh, I think a little bit in our favor as the M1 Abrams are starting to move forward. M163 CS is quad stacked, not quite able to kill that uh, sea plane, but the fact that they could shoot it was kind of amusing enough. Eyes on an M91 V Core here. This isn't the expensive one, it's the. Uh, well, the cheaper one at 130, and you can see my UDT seal push just just able to hold here, so M2's doing with Scratchets, doing with more Sky Pachota, and the fact that they were shooting at the Scratchets first is going to mean they're going to get some value before they get stunned and probably probably outfought by that fresh and healthy unit of Morskaya, but uh, more UDT seals, <laughs> it's just, I had them, I figured may as well use them, right, and I was just endlessly dropping uh, seals and elite infantry into those woods. A10 Thunderbolt going after the Vihor, let's see doesn't quite see it and not move back. First missile goes wide, second missile goes wide, second volley, and there's a hit. Also taken out spat both. I don't know if that was a kill on the Vihor, and it was not. So alive with two strength left, and the A-10 Thunderbolt barely makes it out. Peace wasn't one coming in, and probably no, no great effects here. Let's take a look. Oh, no. Demolished a group of Rada Brunki down to two men, so even if it wasn't a kill, that was pretty effective fire support, uh, so I have no complaints there. And in the meantime, more Sky Pachota running into probably more seals than they expected. So I mean, one, two, three, four groups. This one's nearly dead. I probably should have just retreated them. I just wanted the numbers. I wanted the additional Carl Gustav M2 support. Uh, and oof. Yeah, okay. This is what happens when something with probably an AA gun gets online against infantry. It's absolutely brutal. Six kills. So quick. And more artillery pounding in is going to weaken the UDT seals on that side. Double stack of BMPTs. And let's take a look at what happens. Bell 205 trying to shoot. Uh, also doing some BDV, let's see, yeah, this is unfortunate. So they're dealing with the BDV instead of the BMPT, and that means that the other, my left-hand side was just completely taken out, but it looks like a side-angle shot, and good effects. See if we can get another one. Yep, one BMPT down, and maybe these guys were force path because they were shooting, but they weren't turning, and both of those groups are taken out. MiG-29S 20, uh, coming in, and spotted by the Eagles. Let's see, one hit and second hit that guy is down but the bombs are already dropped and on the way and take out one group of seals uh i did kind of anticipate where that bomb was going to go and so that my other udt seals were moving up past it but uh now we have a counter cap in delta from the red four players so <laughs> we're stopped at 499 points out of 500 with half the game left in terms of time it was just i was sitting there going i just said gg in the chat and uh well no thank you so bmpts and t64s 
moving into these woods and kind of thinking better of it and you can see peace pheasant one coming in i'm trying to just guess the opponent's position here for their command either infantry or vehicle and we do get it and that last plus one tick is going to end the game so um <clears throat> in terms of kills and losses 32 25 to 2800 kind of close but not super close so i think the biggest difference maker was not me i <laughs> 1320 to 1375 technically negative against uh, I hate helos on that side not really surprising to me after I shredded all of those expensive UDT seals trying to keep the the woods probably could have done that a little bit better with some more integrated fire support some Jixa swaggy bond cheaper infantry that could perform a similar role but uh, I wanted to really make sure I held it while core held us in the center and that is what happened uh, core just wonderful KD there I think the initial engagement uh, in that center zone probably went his favor uh, quite a lot so Units that did well, so Cheng Su got a lot of vehicle kills. Um, any kills a 20 point tank gets mean that it had a good day, and two T64As off a 20 point tank, yeah, I'll take that. So I'm quite happy with how that performed. UDT seals, UDT seals, yeah, I mean, no great performance there, which is how my opponent was catching up in terms of kills and losses. Um, but we actually sealed the close score off of one of Vime's units, not one of Hilo's units. So that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.